Shalom and welcome to Crosstalk. Uh, my name is Randy Weiss. We're here today with Jeffrey D. Miller and uh, uh, wow, good to have you with us again, man. Yeah, well, Randy, it's such a blessing for me to be able to sit here and ask you about how you made the tremendous transition from being deep headlong into the worldly ways of drugs and sex and et cetera, rock and roll music. Not that rock and roll is bad, but the kind you were in was bad. And, and, and you, uh, it's a blessing for me to help your viewers see what God did in your life. You had, you were just messed up. You know, I'd like to just say that so no one misunderstands. Yeah, I did bad things. And I hope you don't think that talking about it is celebrating it because oh, no. Sometimes I hear people talk about their past, and it's almost a revel in what occurred to a revelry. And I tend not to talk about these things. But I don't give my testimony that often, and I don't think I've ever discussed most of these things on our program because people might get the wrong impression. Um, I'm just glad. I'm just grateful. I'm just thankful that God was willing to change me and to forgive me and to give me a new life. Yeah, well... You, you know now that was bad and you wish it never would have happened. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, you, you can't be happy about killing a baby. Hmm. You have to live with that the rest of your life. You can't be happy about having influenced people to do horrifying things. Hmm. You can't be happy about being a contributor to the death and destruction of other people. And, right. And you, you were, and it's past tense, which yeah. is the good part. Yeah. So, so you had a situation where things got so bad in this communal type apartment you were living with in sin with a yeah. bunch of other hippies. You, you finally called your dad yeah. and said, I, help. I finally figured out not that I was bad, but that the circumstance in which I was living was bad mm -hmm. and it was going to lead to worse things. I was going to end up in prison. And uh, I called my dad and he, uh, I asked him, can I come home? And, and he let me come home. My how, parents, how old were you then? I would have been about maybe 18, I'm thinking, no, 19. You know, I was a young guy. Yeah. So I was old enough to know better, but in, in a very short time, you did an awful lot wrong. Yeah. Okay, so dad says, come on home. Mom and dad welcome you home. What kind of relationship did you have when you got home? Oh, they were glad that I was, that I was home. They, they told me they didn't want me doing drugs in their house. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I said, you know, okay, I will respect that and not do that in your house. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, I didn't want to be dishonest. All right. But you were still so sold out to the ways of the world that you were saying, well, I'll just shift the way I do it. I'm not yeah. stopping it. Oh, no, no, there was no intention of stopping, none whatsoever. And, and I didn't see any need to. I mean, you got to understand that when you're with a bunch of people who find, uh, who accept this behavior and celebrate this behavior, mm -hmm. illicit sex is only bad to people who know it's wrong. To people who think it's not wrong, it's good. It's why not, sure. Yeah, so if... If drug use changes your attitude about normalcy and you don't like the status quo, you want something to be different, but you're not really capable of changing the world, mm -hmm. you can at least think about it differently. You change yourself. Yeah, in your head. Yeah. And that's what much of the 60s was about, was in our heads. Escape, really. Yeah. Big escape. So you're now home. Uh, your lifestyle's only partially changed by default because when you're in the house, you have to be that way. Yeah. Now, what's going on meanwhile w with your um, uh, future love life? Let's say it that way. Well, okay. It, the, uh, the circumstance was that uh, at one point I had run off with uh, an Italian girl that I'd fallen in love with, and that's where the... Uh, and my parents were completely opposed to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were living together. And that's when there was an abortion. Uh, later, um, I met another Italian girl. And we ran off. 
I wanted her to come live with me. She wouldn't come live with me. Good sign. Yeah, I, I didn't see it that way. <laughs> uh, and, I, I, and I finally said, well, what, what, what are we going to have to do for you to come live with me? Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, I'm going to have to get married. <laughs> and, and I said, huh. Like, that was so foreign, the whole idea. And so I took a bunch of drugs, and I said, uh, okay. Uh, we had the TV on, and there was a preacher on TV. And uh, some humanist knucklehead, I don't know who the guy was any longer. It was a long time ago. But, and I said, I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll get married if he'll marry us. And she said... Okay. So we got to the end of the program, and it was an address up in Minnesota. So she said, uh, hmm, Minnesota. I said, yeah. Okay. I said, I guess take a little more, and we'll go to Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> so Goodness. that's what I did. Yeah. We get to where we were going, and it must have been 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I, I find this guy's home. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. bizarre, yeah. way bizarre. Way bizarre. Knocking on the door, hey, <laughs> hey, anybody home? And the neighbor comes out. What are you doing? <laughs> I said, well, I need to see Reverend whatever his name is. He says, why? I said, well, he's going to marry us. I said, does he know that? <laughs> I said, no, no. no. I said, well, he's not here. He's in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Where you just came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it's like really disappointing, you know, <laughs> or maybe I'm off the hook. What's happening? Yeah. You know, so we turn around and lo and behold, a blizzard hits. I mean, a Minnesota blizzard and my little Volkswagen is in a ditch mm -hmm. up to the doors. Wow. This little Italian girl, she's just like, what am I going to tell my daddy? What am I going to tell my daddy? <laughs> and I said, well, well I'll, I'll get you home. I'll get you home. You know, so we finally got back and we get to the door of her house. And I'd only met her parents one time. I was afraid of parents. Oh, I, I can understand that. Yeah. Uh, you know, people ask me, did you, you know, did the church reach out to you? What did the church say to you? I said, the only thing I ever heard from the church was stay away from my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I ever heard from Christians. <laughs> but it's the next day now. Mm -hmm. And she knows her parents are terrified. Yeah. Where, where is she? Yeah. And her father comes to the door. And he's so happy to see her. And he was much older. He was a, she was a baby, very old when, he was, mm -hmm. when she was born. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Where have you been? To me. Mm -hmm. And I said, we went to get married. Because <laughs> we did. We yeah, went to get married. Right? And he said, oh, you've made me a happy man. <laughs> and we moved in with her parents. <laughs> well, did you actually get married? Well, not <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and we're not reveling in this. There is nothing it's funny stupid. about this. It's so stupid, it's yeah. funny. There is nothing funny about this. <laughs> we moved in. He thought we got married. And Adrian, my wife, uh -huh. uh, it was late 1972 when we ran off. You know, I mean, when we, we were in love. January 73, we're living with her parents. And she says, Randy, we've got to get married. <laughs> They're going to find out. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, I know. I know. And uh, so I had just come out with a record. And we decided we were going to kind of go on a honeymoon record promotion tour. And we were going to get married. <laughs> Great combo. Yeah. And so that's what we did. And, and were you still... Actively using drugs? Yes. In fact, um, we started life. I had $600 in the bank from the last drug deal I had made. Mm. And that's all the money I had. And uh, I had no employment other than playing rock and roll music and being a small-time little peddler, you know. Mm -hmm. But I had $600, and uh, that purchased our honeymoon. So you set out, and, and you, you did get married? Yes. Yankton, South Dakota. Uh, uh, we tried to get married in uh, 
the capital city where I was doing a radio uh, interview, uh, but they they wouldn't accept our blood test or they wouldn't accept something that was away. I don't remember what it was, but we ended up going to Yankton, South Dakota, <laughs> and uh, the hometown of Lawrence Welk, I might add, and uh, we got married by a judge, not a justice of the peace, a judge at the end of the I do's. He held out his hand. I thought he wanted to shake hands, and he said, ten dollars. You know? <laughs> well, you had ten. You had that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, when you came back from this tour, uh, back to her parents' house again? Well, no. Everything changed on this okay. on this trip. Um, she left me. Uh, <laughs> she left me in Colorado shortly after you married. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, I made her get back in it. She jumped out of the car. She said, I don't have my brother come pick me up, you know. And I said, no, no, you're, you get mm -hmm. back in this car. And, uh, but a real interesting thing had occurred. I had carried some books with me when we left town. I had gone back to college in 1972. I was studying ancient Greek and Hebrew civilizations, mythology, and uh, music appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was interested in weird stuff. And I had bought some weird books with weird titles. And one of them was The Lake Ray Planet Earth. Mm. And I happened to pick that book up when we got to Phoenix, Arizona. As we were coming into Phoenix, I saw a tent out in the desert. It was like a revival tent. I mm -hmm. didn't know that's what it was, but it had a big sign on it. Christ is the answer. And I just so clearly remember going past that tent and looking at it and saying to my wife, What's the question? <laughs> so what's the question? Yeah, I mean, I didn't get it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got to, we get into Phoenix, we're staying at a Jewish friend's apartment, and I picked up the book, and I just started reading it. And uh, I'm guessing we're probably going to have to take a break, and I need to tell you what happened when I picked up that book. We'll be right back.